In this video, we create a hub and spoke network in Azure with a VPN gateway. Coming up, we're going to use a VPN gateway to connect multiple virtual networks in a hub and spoke configuration. Before that, please like, subscribe, click the bell icon for notifications of new content, and share with a friend on the social media platform of your choice. Become a member for early access to videos, ad free while private. Also check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and hybrid identities with Windows AD and Azure AD at udemy.com. Back to it, we're going to review using a VPN gateway to enable gateway transit in a hub and spoke network. In my last video, we talked about how VNet peering is non-transitive, meaning if virtual network A is peered with network B and B to C, network A and C can't communicate. Why not just peer all the virtual networks together for a mesh network? Mesh is fine for small networks, but the number of peerings increase with each additional VNet. Mesh networks don't scale well. Instead, we'll use a hub and peer each virtual network with that hub to create a hub and spoke network. We'll use a gateway transit connection to allow network traffic to flow from one spoke to the other. Gateway transit works by adding a gateway to the hub virtual network. The gateway on the hub learns about the spoke subnets through the peering relationships. The VNet gateway routes traffic between each spoke, creating the gateway transit relationship. This example uses a VPN gateway as the routing device in the hub of my hub and spoke network. I'm not actually creating a site to site VPN. That's not the point of this video. I have another video on that topic. I'll add the link to that in the comments below. In order for this to work, the peering relationship between the spoke and the hub must allow traffic to the remote network and allow traffic from the remote network. It also has to be configured to use the remote virtual network gateway. And we need to configure routing at the spoke subnet so traffic to the other spokes forward to the gateway. This point makes the entire solution a little more difficult to implement because we have to manually define routes for each subnet. I also have a warning for anyone thinking about using the solution. Microsoft does not recommend the configuration I'm showing. The VPN gateway is designed to encrypt traffic, not as a router. There's no guarantee on bandwidth between the spokes with this configuration. Instead, Microsoft recommends a virtual WAN hub router, Azure Firewall, or a network virtual appliance. I'll leave a link to more information below. I'm still showing this example because there are fringe use cases where the configuration may be the best option. Also, if you're learning Azure networking, it's an interesting example of how the technologies work together. In the example coming up, we have three virtual networks, Hub, Spoke1, and Spoke2. The spoke virtual networks have one subnet and one computer attached to each. We're going to add a gateway to the hub network and then peer the spoke virtual networks with a hub. After that, we'll configure routing tables to forward interspoke traffic to the virtual network gateway. Finally, we'll verify connectivity. Let's get started in the Azure portal. Here we are in Azure. This environment has three virtual networks, hub, spoke one, and spoke two. Let's create a VPN gateway on the hub VNet to get started. We'll add a resource. Search for virtual network gateway. We'll create a virtual network gateway. Make sure your subscription is selected and give it a name. Hub gateway for this example. Select the region. It has to be in the same region as the virtual networks. West US for this example. Leave it as VPN and route based. Set the SKU to VPN GW1. You could set it as a larger SKU if needed. I tried this with a basic gateway and it didn't work. The basic SKU has some limitation and is only recommended for testing. Generation 1 is our only option. Select the Hub Virtual Network. We need a subnet called Gateway dedicated to the gateway. If one doesn't exist, it will be created. We'll create a new public IP and give it a name. Hub Gateway Pub IP for this example. Leave the rest as is and go to Review and Create. You could also add tags if needed. Once validation finishes, click Create.
It can take a gateway deployment a while to finish. It'll take about 30 minutes for the deployment to complete. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. The deployment finished, let's go to the resource. As I mentioned in the intro to this video, my goal is not to create a VPN tunnel. It's only to configure gateway transit so network traffic can flow between the two spoked VNets. Let's take a look at the first VNet. That's spoke one. There's one connected device. That's the Windows VM for testing. And there's no peering. Let's go to spoke two. There's one connected device. Again, a virtual machine for testing. And there's no peerings. Let's add peerings next. We'll create our first peering at spoke two since we're here. Go to add peerings. If you're unfamiliar with pairing, check out my previous video on the subject. The link is in the comments below and probably on the screen someplace. We'll give it a name. Peer MAS Spoke 2 to MAS Hub. This indicates the Microsoft Azure sponsorship subscription and VNet Spoke 2 is peered with the same subscription and the Hub VNet. We'll allow traffic to the remote virtual network and traffic forwarded from the remote networks. Those two are required for this configuration to work. Also, we'll use the remote virtual network gateway. We get an error because we don't have the matching settings yet on the hub side of the peering connection. We'll take care of that in a second. Let's scroll down and give the hub side of this connection a name. Just like before, only going in the other direction. Select the hub VNet. We'll scroll down some more. Make sure allow is selected for traffic to the remote virtual network and traffic forwarded from the remote virtual network. Also select use this virtual network gateway or route server. And now our error goes away. And then add. The peering relationship between spoke one and hub has been created. If we refresh, it should show connected. There it goes. Now let's go to the hub network and view peering. There's our connection. And notice that gateway transit is enabled. That takes care of the peering between spoke two and the hub. Let's create the peering between spoke one and the hub. So we'll go to spoke one, add a peering. We'll give it a name. Make sure allow is selected for traffic to remote virtual network and traffic forwarded from remote virtual network. Also, use the remote virtual network gateway. Now we'll give the hub side a name. Select our hub network. This is the same thing we just did, only for spoke one. And use the virtual network gateway or route server. And add. There it's connected. We can go back to the hub. That shows both of our peerings and both of them have gateway transit enabled. Let's just refresh this. And now both of them are connected. Next, we have to configure routing. Before we do that, let's hop on a test VM and try to ping the other. Let's see which VM we're on. So we're on spoke one VM. That's on the 10.1 network. Let's ping the VM on the 10.2 network. The IP of that virtual machine is 10.2.0.4. And it fails. Let's take a look at the routing table for that VM in Azure. So we'll go back to the Azure portal. Here's our two virtual machines. We'll go into spoke one VM, the one we were just pinging from. And if we go to networking, open up the network interface. And way at the bottom, we have effective routes. Give that a second update. Here's the routing configuration. It lists the 10.1 as connected to the virtual network. And the 10.0, the hub VNet, is listed because there's a peering relationship in place. The rest are the default Azure settings. I don't see any route to the 10.2 network. We need to add that manually. So let's search for route tables to create our routes.
Here we are in route tables. We'll create a route table. Make sure your subscription is selected and select the resource group. Set your region and give it a name. This one is for spoke one, so we'll call it spoke one RT for route table. You can leave route propagation set to yes. And review and create. And create. This creates the route table. We'll add the routes to the table once it's created. But let's first do the same for spoke two. We'll go back to route tables. We'll create a new route table. Set the subscription and resource group. Then the location. Then give it a name. This one is for spoke two, so we'll call it spoke two RT. And leave propagate gateway routes as yes. We'll create that. Let's go back to route tables. There are both of our route tables. Now we have to add the routes to each of the table. So let's open up spoke one RT. Go to routes. And we'll add a route. We have to give it a name. We'll call this one spoke to hyphen traffic hyphen to hyphen hub. And this route will send traffic going to spoke to to the hub. Set the address prefix destination to IP address. We'll add the prefix for the spoke to VNet. That's 10.2.0.0 slash 16. The next hop is the virtual network gateway. And there's no address for that. So we'll click add. And that will add the route. That adds the route to the route table. Next, we have to associate the route table to a subnet. Now, you can do that directly from the subnets in the VNet, or we can do it right from the routing table. We'll go to subnets, associate. And this is for spoke one and the default subnet. Now, our routes are configured for the spoke one subnet. We have to do the same for spoke two. We'll go back to route table. Select the spoke two route table. Go to routes, add a route. We'll call this spoke one traffic to hub. This is because we're sending any traffic going to spoke one to the hub. It's IP address for the address prefix destination. We'll set the prefix destination IP address. That's the 10.1 network. That's the address base for the spoke one VNet. Next hop is the virtual network gateway. And there is no address for that. We'll click add. And next go to subnets. And we have to associate that with our subnet. We'll associate this to the subnet in our spoke to VNet. And there's only one subnet default. Here lies one of the problems with this solution. We have to add routes to all the spokes to each subnet. This would be complicated to manage in large networks. It's almost as problematic as managing a mesh network. Next, let's verify the new routes are added to the virtual machine's route table. So let's go back to the virtual machine. And we'll select the spoke one VM. Go to networking. Open up the Spoke 1 VM network interface and go all the way down under help to effective routes. If you don't see this right away, that's okay. Just give it a couple minutes. Sometimes it takes some time for this to show up. Here we have a new route. The source is user, it's active. The address prefix is 10.2.0.0 slash 16. So anything in the 10.2 network, that's the Spoke 2 network. The next hop is the virtual network gateway. Finally, now that our routing configuration is in place, we can test connectivity. Let's go back to the Spoke 1 VM. And if you are following along, be sure to allow ICMP traffic through the Windows firewall. It's off by default. Or you could disable the firewall completely if you're in a lab and security isn't the first priority. So we're on Spoke 1 VM. Our previous attempt to ping Spoke VM 2 failed. Let's run that command again. There we go, now it's working. Now we have transitive network traffic through the virtual network gateway.
That is how to configure a VNet gateway to route traffic between spokes in a hub and spoke configuration. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.